Welcome to Bite Size Booksmith, where technology empowers creativity. I'm Angie, and on this channel, we explore how emerging technologies and AI can enhance our craft and lives as writers. Today, we're doing something a little bit different. Instead of coming up with an idea for a video today, you guys actually came up with the idea for today. I actually posted earlier and asked what the biggest questions everyone had about Novel Crafter was. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Here are the awesome comments that came in. And I, there's a couple that I'm going to address first, and then we're going to go into Novel Crafter so I can answer the others. I think the easiest one that I can answer is this one right here. Can you write realistic contemporary literature with this, meaning Novel Crafter? Or is it designed more for the fantasy genre? You can write realistic and contemporary literature, no problem at all. I tend to write more supernatural and fantasy stuff because that is what I'm drawn to. But there are plenty of people that are writing all kinds of realistic and contemporary pieces. I will say that earlier today, I was working on two other projects. I was working on an menage, contemporary menage erotic piece, as well as a mafia romance. And both of those were in a contemporary world. There is no issues. It's actually, I think, easier to write realistic and contemporary literature with Novel Crafter and AI than it is to do all the world building that goes with doing something that's either paranormal, science fiction, or fantasy. So there you go. Okay, so what's next? I want to talk about fine tuning. I haven't done any fine tuning yet. And the reason for this is I'm super busy in my normal life. And I honestly just haven't gotten to it yet. But I will say there are some fantastic videos already out there on fine tuning if you want to check them out. So I will start here with the AI Writers Connection, Eric Gold and CC. Let's see, we've got Create Your Writer's Voice Fine Tunes right here. And she actually also gives you a converter, I believe. I've seen her mention that in the community. I'm actually in the AI Writers Connection community. So come by, say hi. And then also, I believe this one right here is also Fine Tune. Uh, so Fine Tune Pros Generation in Your Voice. Definitely go and check these two videos by Marigold out. And then I wanted to come here to the nerdy novelist, Jason Hamilton. He has, I think, four of them. I want to say there's one down here using the free tool from Novel Crafter for fine tuning. And I want to say this one right here. Uh, he actually shows you how to find your fine tune and use it inside of Novel Crafter. And I know this one right here. He talked about it as well. I haven't watched that one yet, but I do know that he has got a couple of these already. So go check out uh, Jason Hamilton. He is the nerdy novelist. And then also check out AI Writers Connection. So the rest of the questions. So we've got crafting prompts and populating the codex. We've also got considering how context is created. And I can show you guys that. And as well as getting data into the codex, as well as the plot and the scenes. So let's move on over to Novel Crafter. So another project I was working on today was taking the, my National Novel Writing Month book and putting it into Novel Crafter. It was pre-Novel Crafter, so I was actually writing that using a combination of Future Fiction Academy's Rexy as well as Claude 2.0. So let me go ahead and open this up. So the reason I wanted to use this one is because I've done a lot of work on it. And so we've got a lot of stuff here. I haven't added everything in yet. I was just trying to go through today and I was testing the beats in the different versions of Claude to see which version of Claude was sounding best for this project. Let's talk about getting data into the codex. So all of my information for this story is actually inside of Notion. And unfortunately, I did have to copy and paste everything in here. So I've got um uh, just to give you a little bit about the story, it's a young adult dystopian science fiction novel. So it's dystopian in space. It's about a girl who is a technological genius who's into engineering and coding and stuff like that. And 
So she is in the lower ranks. She lives in what's called the beneath of this ship called Haven One. And it's very involving, but basically because of her aptitude, she gets to move up to a different level and ends up catching the people who are in charge doing some things that are super duper underhanded. I went ahead and I created a custom category for my levels of the ship because there's actually seven different levels of the ship. I've got some of my characters. I don't have all of them in here yet, as well as now my locations. There's actually technically only two locations here. So I took the levels of Haven 1 and I actually put them as nested references. Uh, I didn't want to put them all in one, so I just attached them uh, to this one here. And then I've got Haven 1, which is the ship itself. And so I've got some information about the ship, but then I have additional references to the backstory of the ship. So how the ship came to be, as well as what's going on outside the ship and the society and the challenges that exist on the ship as well. And then I also reference the levels of the ship. So everything's connected. I also, when I wrote this, I had some additional, I don't remember how I got this. I think I was in chat GPT and was just asking some very specific questions. And it told me that it suggested that I have these character specific expressions, dialogue and interaction, as well as an emotional palette. So I ended up adding all of these into my prompt. I had this massive prompt that I would stick into Claude and then I would write beat by beat. So what is Novel Crafter? It's a giant prompt and then we write beat by beat. So I'm still in the process of figuring out how this all works versus how I have to attach everything. Back to the actual question, how do you get data into the codex? you add it by hand. You have to copy and paste it. Or if you use chat, I have it actually use chat. Let me use some context here. I'll use the scene one as context. And I will say, please give me the scene beats for this chapter, or excuse me, for the scene. And we will use, I don't want the copy. Oh, let's see. What do I want to use? General purpose. We'll just use Claude 3 Sonnet. And we'll send it. Hopefully it does what I want it to do, because then I can show you another way to do this. Okay, great. So if you come down here and hit extract, and it takes the eight scene beats, and then you can copy the scene beats, and then you can put the scene beats into your writing. So that's another way of extracting things. You can also, if these were things for the codex, you could extract them into the codex. And then also, if you are doing outlines, you can also extract your outline and add to outline. That's not what I was doing, so we're not going to do that. I don't want to mess everything up. Also, speaking of outlines, let's go back to plan. I've got a lot of stuff in here. Uh, But you can also come down here to create from outline. And it actually has a layout here already. So if you were to copy this layout, either act one, and then you could put what the name of the act is, or just put chapter one, and then you can put what's in the chapter. If you follow this format, then you can uh, hit create and it will, I'm not sure if it, it will overwrite or if it will append. If you already have something in your outline, I would be cautious of this. You also, if you don't have an outline already, And we also have a video on that if you want to go check it out. I think that was maybe two videos ago. I'll just put it in the description. So you also can use the three act structure and then you can just type in here what you want the outline to look like. Save the cat. Hero's journey. 
These are all ones that I talked about in that outlining video. And then you just hit create. But that's a quick and easy way to add your structure. Again, I do want to mention that you are able to export codex entries. So you can come to here, export all entries. And I'm actually going to do that right now. So you can see what it looks like. Give me one second and I'll pull that out. Okay, so I went ahead and I unzipped the folder uh, with the codex in it. And I just came here to index and I opened the index. And as you can see here, it's it got a full list of all of your codex entries. So if you're perhaps moving it to a different, that's not in the same series or something like that, all you have to do is export your entries and then you can really easily copy and paste. I will say that as recent as yesterday, someone asked if there was going to be an import function for importing codex entries. And I believe Space Motion answered that question and said, it's coming, it's just not here yet. So that's definitely something that's on her roadmap, being able to import codex entries. So just so you know. Okay, so let's continue to the next question. And that was about where does the context come from in the first place? So if you are in, let's see, we are here in, this is scene two. So in scene two, we have the scene beat. It, we also have the information here about the scene. And then it, anything that you have linked to, I believe it pulls that context for those in as well as your items like this. So always include for AI. So if they're marked with this little handy dandy icon, I believe it's always included. So your story genre, as well as your prose style guide. Now, remember with my prose style guide, I actually nested a bunch of references. So I've got my emotion style, narrative voice and perspective, my themes and my writing style as well. So it's actually being pulled into the AI context as well as all of those things. So let me tell you, when I was testing this out and I was using Claude Opus, just running at one time was costing me nine cents, which is insane when it comes to AI, because I'm used to spending hundreds or thousands of a cent when I run stuff. So just keep that in mind if you are using Opus and you have a lot of things that you are referencing. Also, if you're in, let's come up here to my character. And it's got these handy dandy little like magic, I'm going to call it, these little sparkles. This means it's a field that is read by the AI. So your aliases uh, are nicknames, as well as your descriptions. And then if there are any progressions or additions. So one thing you need to know about AI is if you, let me think of the best way to say this. So you're writing an outline and Stans is your bad guy. So if the AI knows ahead of time that Stan is actually the bad guy, then the AI will do all kinds of crazy stuff to like make it obvious that Stan is the bad guy. So one of the ways that we can avoid that is we can do what's called this progression or addition. And as we go through the story, we can actually add these things to specific characters as they encounter those things. So if you know that your character is going to get pregnant, with your hero's baby in the third act, then you can go ahead and at that time, you can say the heroine gets pregnant versus having it in here in this description and then having the AI try to foreshadow and break the news early. So let me just mention the AI is not very good at foreshadowing. You're definitely going to have to keep it on a short leash. And using this progression in additions is a great way to do that. Uh, and I believe, I don't know if I can do it because, here, let me just try doing it here. I believe you just type in here and you put it codex edition, I believe right here. So yep, codex edition, you select your entry and then you just tell it what the edition is. So there you go. Now, if I come back here, 
you can see chapter one, scene two, she steps on a nail. So that's how it works. It's pretty cool. Okay. So I think we covered that one, how context is created. If you have any more specific questions about that, please let me know. And then crafting prompts. So I will say that whether I'm crafting scene beats or whether I'm crafting prompts for my stuff, I'm always rewriting it. I don't know about you guys, but what the AI gives me is usually really anemic. So this, for instance, is really short. And unfortunately, that's not enough context for it gave this back to me. But if I gave this to it, it, it would be like, I don't know what you're talking about. I have a tendency to I'll run a draft of, OK, here's the scene beats that I think should be in here. And then I'll take it probably into Notion or I use Notepad like all the time. I'll rewrite it. I'll beef it up really a lot. And then I'll stick it in here. So that's how when I am doing prompts, at least for the scene beats, that's how I do it. Now, how I do prompts for here, I just come into the instructions and I tell it what I want it to know. If I don't know what I want the prompt to do, I'll have a conversation with ChatGPT and I'll say, hey, who would do this thing? If I wanted someone, for instance, I did this blurb copywriter one and I said, you're a copywriter and you're adept at creating blurbs for a diverse range of fiction genres. That came from me having a conversation with the AI where I said, hey, who writes blurbs for books? Besides the author, if we're not, the author is usually the one that writes it in an indie setting. So who actually writes it with one that's being published by a big publishing house? And then it gave me a list and it also gave me a list of different things that those people should know how to do. And then I take that list and then I determined what's the persona that I want to program into my prompt. Okay, so. Let me know if you have any more questions or if I didn't answer that question correctly. So anyway, I think that's enough for today. My voice is going. I did want to uh, put it out there. If you guys have any additional questions, go ahead and put them down below. I can always make another one of these videos pretty soon. And I will talk to you guys later. Have a great day.